What is going on everybody and welcome back to Mad Detailing. Today's video is on this 2019 Outlander and this has got to be the moldiest vehicle I've ever seen. Normally when we do moldy vehicles, there's some mold here and there. This vehicle has an insane amount of mold on every single surface and it is super thick and yeah, it's just downright disgusting. And on top of that, this vehicle took us over five days to restore back to its factory condition. So take a second and make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and let's see if we can get this video to 10,000 likes in the first week i know you guys can do it with that being said we're going to go ahead and roll these before shots and get right into this moldy disaster detail the first step of this detail is to get these nasty soggy stinky seats out of the way and then we can take a good look around the vehicle you know excessive damage which it's pretty bad and then we can get all the loose trash and debris removed before moving on to a good pre-vacuum and then we can pull the carpet out because it, it's got to come out it's super soggy and nasty <laughs> So like I said at the very beginning of this video, this vehicle took us over five days and that's because when you're dealing with mold and this much you know, water and moisture in a vehicle, it's a time consuming process. Like I didn't film everything just because you guys don't wanna watch that, but pretty much I'm gonna give you a rundown exactly how you do these vehicles. So the first step, you get everything removed, all the seats, you want all the trash out, you wanna uh, vacuum the entire carpet, then we pull it out. And after you get everything removed, you take the carpet and the seats and you put it in the sun to dry because they're probably soaking wet and then we put a dehumidifier in the vehicle i know normally people you know will ozone a vehicle before they even touch it when it's moldy but that's not going to do anything because there's so much moisture in the vehicle so we always use a dehumidifier first and then once everything's dried out then we put the ozone machine in there but once the seat and carpet had time to dry that's when we start our cleaning process I know I get a lot of questions when we do vehicles like this, like will the mold come back? And if it's done properly and you follow, you know, a strict process, you make sure you get every bit of moisture, the mold will not come back. So I hope this helps. And moving on to the seat extraction, I'm now using our Mad Detailing Extreme APC diluted four to one, and I'm using a Milwaukee drill with a drill brush attachment. And for the extractor, I'm using my Mighty HP60 hot water extractor.
And moving on to cleaning all the interior panels, I'm now using our Mad Detailing Extreme APC in a soft boar's hair detail brush. And then I'm gonna use the steamer to make sure I loosen up and you know remove all this moldiness. And then I will use a microfiber towel and compressed air to blow out all the tight cracks and crevices. And honestly, one thing I hate about these brand new vehicles is just how cheaply they're made. If you guys see this emblem on the steering wheel, it has like a chrome plating to it. It's almost like just a sticker and they always come off. And this one was already like chipping. So I knew this, you know, blowing it out with compressed air was gonna completely remove it. But honestly, there was really no way around it. I knew it was gonna come up if I cleaned it, you know, the thoroughly like I needed to, but this mold had to be removed. So I had to use, you know, a more aggressive method because if this vehicle was clean, I would have just, you know, hit it with some Alpers cleaner and a brush and I wouldn't have came off any more than it already was. But the method that I have to use, I knew it was gonna take it off. So I just went ahead and got them a new emblem. So yeah, no big deal.
And moving on to cleaning this nasty carpet, we opted to use a pressure washer instead of just extracting it. That way we can thoroughly, you know, blow out the entire carpet, the front and the back. But my genius thought that these floor mat holders would hold it up and it, it didn't. So we had to move the carpet down to the ground. So first we're gonna pre-rinse the entire carpet and then we'll move on to using our Extreme APC and a drill brush. And then we will pressure wash all the degreaser out of the carpet. And then we'll go back with the extractor, get all the water out and then we'll hang it to dry. So normally, as you guys know, we always do the outside first, then we move on to the inside, and then at the very end, we, you know, follow up with finishing the outside. But honestly, for this video, it just, it made more sense to do the inside first, which honestly, kind of threw me off a little bit, threw off my process. But either way, we're starting with cleaning the engine bay first with our Mad Detailing Extreme APC. We're gonna let that dwell for about 15 to 20 seconds, and then simply spray it off with a pressure washer. So moving on to cleaning the wheels, I'm using our Extreme APC on the tires and fender wells. And for the wheels, I'm using our Mad Acid along with multiple different brushes so I can make sure I get every inch of this wheel and tire 100% clean. Before I can move on to any type of contact wash, I'm now using our Extreme APC diluted 10 to 1. And the reason why I prefer to use an APC as a pre-wash, I know when I'm working on a vehicle that's dirty or it hasn't been washed in a while, is because it, it removes a lot more dirt than just a snow foam usually would because it is more alkaline cleaner, so it's gonna easily remove all that dirt and grime. That way, when you move on to a contact wash, your paint is as clean as possible. That way, you're not you know introducing more swirls and scratches to your paint.
And moving on to an actual contact wash, I'm now using a foam cannon and our mad detailing super blue soap. And then I'm gonna give the vehicle a nice hand wash with a soft microfiber wash mitt. And moving on to claying the Outlander, I'm using our mad detailing clay lube in a synthetic nano scrub pad. Um, normally you're supposed to use these on a DA, but honestly, I just prefer to use it by hand. It's it's a lot faster. And honestly, with a DA, it starts spinning too fast and starts creating heat eventually and will just like leave behind some rubber. So yeah, I just like to use them by hand. I prefer to use an actual clay bar because I feel like it is a lot more thorough, but a lot of people argue say that these are better, but it's honestly just your own personal opinion. But either way, a clay bar or a synthetic clay mitt like this, We'll both get the job done. And after getting the vehicle washed, it's now time to add some protection. So I'm using our mad detailing spray ceramic sealant. You can either use it on the vehicle when it's wet or dry, but for this case, I'm gonna use it when it's wet. I'm gonna spray it on the entire vehicle. I'm gonna go back with a microfiber towel, you know, wipe it into the paint, and then I'm gonna use another towel to wipe off the access. And this ceramic sealant has a 30% SiO2 by volume and leaves behind a nice high gloss shine and is super hydrophobic. So if you guys would like to try this product or any of our mad detailing products, you guys can head over to www.maddetailingusa or I'll have the link in the description and it'll take you right to the website.